Hi, my name is Ben Nisbet, and we work, or I work out at the table tennis store. We do about 20 to 25 rackets a week. And often what happens is we get a request to put on OX long pips, which is a little bit different with racket assembly than putting on your normal rubber sheet. So the purpose of this video is to show you how we do this and to give you some ideas and some tips and some tricks on how to do this if you want to do it yourself. So the first step we do when we uh, use the OX, uh, when we put on the OX sponge, is we check the dryness of the wood. It's a little bit dry to the touch. And if we put some varnish on it, and then when you're done with the OX, or you want to replace it and you pull it up, you're not pulling up fibers in the wood. So we're going to start with that first. That's a really simple process. We just brush it on. You want a thin coat. And we essentially cover it. And for most rackets, this is not necessary. Uh, but what we're finding a lot of times with defensive rackets that are all wood, sometimes the wood is a little bit dry and we need to cover it. Very important when you're varnish is that you don't want to leave residue, varnish residue on the racket. Uh, so we got a paper towel here and now we're going to wipe off the excess. We want the varnish to soak into the wood. We don't want it to stay on the surface. And this process, what happens here is it just hardens the wood enough so that when you're taking off the OX sponge after you're done with it, it's not pulling up the fibers, the wood fibers. This takes about 10 minutes to dry, uh, and we like to put it under a fan, uh, a light fan that just kind of blows, blows air onto the varnish to dry it. When we're putting together the racket with the OX, um, or the long pips with no sponge, it's called OX, uh, we typically like to assemble the first side with the sponge first, and so now we're just going to work on what's off in the back side of the racket for the, defenders, for the defensive player. And so we're ready to go here. We've varnished this side. And here is our Hallmark OX Tactics LP rubber that we've been asked to put a sheet on. And if you can see, it's very crinkly, right? It's, it's not easy. It's very loose. It's a little bit hard to put down. Uh, we've got two options here for doing this. Uh, one is to use a glue sheet, which is what we're going to do. The other is that we could just treat it as if it's a normal sheet of sponge, which you can do as well. We put glue here and glue here, and then we just lay it down. It's a little bit trickier, but it can be done. So I'm going to show you the former, and we're going to get this going. So here is our glue sheet. And here's our sponge. Uh, one thing that I do is probably different than most people is I actually like to use the glue even though I'm using the glue sheet. And the reason behind that is that sometimes the glue sheets really, really stick strongly to the wood. And I would prefer to put a layer of glue here and a layer of glue on a layer of glue on the wood and a layer of glue on the back side of the long pips. And then uh, after this is dried, just one layer, use the glue sheet and I'll show you how that's done. And so we're gonna pour a little bit of glue here and a little bit of glue here. Another thing that we do before we start, which I forgot to mention, is we pour a little bit of water here onto the sponge to make it work, uh, to make it spread a little bit quicker. And so now, unlike sponge, this spreads really, really quickly. So I think I've used a little bit too much glue, which is easy because we can put it back. And so now we have the wood blade covered. Now we're going to do the back side of the sponge. We have to put our finger down here to 
hold it. And because we're using a low viscosity glue, we have a little bit more time. This is why we like one of these glues here. It's got a little bit more water in the mix. So now we wait for it to dry. The glue here is ready to, is now dry, so we're ready to put the glue sheet on. So what we're doing here is we're peeling the back side of the glue sheet. This side is very sticky, and we're going to lay it on the racket. We're going to anchor it with our thumb. And we're just going to spread it with our finger and lay it down flat. It sticks really nicely because we have glue underneath, and so the nice thing about putting glue is it, it stops the propensity of having any air bubbles. It just sticks very, very nicely. And so now we're done, and we have the glue sheet affixed to the racket. With this glue sheet, uh, it's a little bit tricky to pull off the paper backside. So we're going to get that set up by taking a corner here and pulling it apart. So once we've caught the edge here, I just like to pull this up. And even with the glue to glue, the glue sheet wants to lift up a little bit. So we have to push it down a little bit with our fingers. And there we go. We now have a sticky side of the glue sheet, and it's ready to lay down the sponge. Uh, one thing that I like to do with this is just to make sure is to use this and just push down in a couple of spots where I see it might be coming up. And now we can pick this up. And we're ready to go. We have a fixed glue here. So we're putting glue onto the glue sheet. A glued long pip onto the glue sheet. You have to be very careful in maneuvering this because it wants to fold back in on itself. So I usually grab it from the top let gravity hold down the back, the front side. Turn it around. And so our next step here is we want to anchor. Once we anchor this, we have it under control. So we need to anchor this front part of the sponge to the top of the handle. We've got our finger here as support. And now we have it set up the way we want it. And so once we have it anchored, I would lift up and the backside's sticky now because we have glue, so I have to be a little bit careful. Now I have I have this set up where I've anchored it and Using one hand, we just gently let the pips roll onto the rubber. Using our finger, you could use this roller if you wanted to. I like to do it slowly because it, from time to time, has a propensity to crinkle up. If it does, you can just pull it up a little bit and lay it back down. But this is going on really, really nicely right now. So here we have the surface and it's pretty much flat without any crinkles. Um, but what we want to do is we want to just roll this gently using the roller to flatten anything out.
And now we have our, got a couple of spots here where we're just gonna push down and we are ready to go. So once we've got this affixed, we go around the sides to make sure it's really anchored. And now we use a uh, curved scissors. We really like the curved scissors. And with the curved scissors, we have it, it you'd think that you'd want to cut, use it this way, but use it with the curve going out. And this works much better than a blade for the OX because it has a tendency to possibly tear on the inside if you use this. You can use it, we find this a little bit easier to use. Take a little bit of this off here. We'll take a little bit of this off. But if you can see around the edge, we've got a nice clean cut. And so the only thing here we have to do is we just have to take off a little bit of the glue that found its way onto the front sponge sheet, and we're good to go. Here, uh, we like to put on edge tape under the racket, which we're going to do here. This protects. the outside of the racket. And we have a lime green edge tape. If you don't like lime green, I'm sorry. Uh, we do have black. Um, but I think it looks nice. Here we go, we have your OX racket, ready to play.